Hey Makers Gonna Learn crafters, this is Becca Oaks. I am a craft producer here with Makers Gonna Learn and I love to craft. Today we are going to be talking about patterned iron on. So this is a question that we get a whole lot. What specific projects can I use with patterned iron on? And I totally get this question because patterned iron on can be a little tricky. Uh, if you're doing a smaller project or a project with small fonts or small cut files, then you're not gonna be able to see that pattern on the iron on. Uh, so it can be tricky to come up with an idea uh, for using that pattern iron on and this particular project that we're doing today I really like because you can take this idea and do it in several different ways today we are going to be making a cute little tote bag this is a denim tote bag that we got at Hobby Lobby and we're gonna be putting a shape on here and then another cut file on top so we're gonna be layering iron on uh, Yes, layering iron on. And the back is going to be that patterned iron on and the front is going to be a solid iron on. You can take this specific design idea and instead of, uh, for instance, we're using a train with the name Bex cut out of the front of it, um, you could put a monogram on it and uh, change the back shape. Just do a couple of different things, but use the same concept on different projects like shirts and bags and whatever you want to do. Um, so for supplies today, like I said, we have this cute little tote bag. I believe we got it at our local um, Hobby Lobby. It was really cheap under three dollars um, and then we have a solid iron on that we're going to be using today we do have our patterned iron on um, these are Cricut patterned iron ons and you can use uh, you know whatever if you like 651 they have a great selection of patterned iron ons as well um, we also have our little easy press here we have our heat resistant mat we're going to be using um, this Teflon sheet. You can also use butcher's paper if you want to, just something that is a good protective layer. Um, we're gonna be using some weeding tools, our green standard grip mat, and our standard fine point blade. Uh, that should cover it for supplies, and then we can jump over into design space and I'll show you just really quickly how we put this design together. Okay, so our uh, tote bag is eight and a half by 11 inches. So this rectangle right here um, is a representation of that space that we have to work with. So that's what I went ahead and put that there. And then I grabbed a basic shape over here in design space. I grabbed a hexagon. You can see it right here pulled it over here and just sized it. Um, you do wanna keep in mind when you're doing these projects um, that the point of this project is to see the pattern. Uh, so you definitely wanna make this um, a little bit bigger so that you can see it. If I make it super small like this, I'm not gonna see that pattern. So I wanna make sure uh, that it's bigger. Generally, um, when we're designing, we don't like to necessarily fill up the entire space sometimes, um, but with this pattern uh, iron on, that's sort of the point. See the pattern. Um, so keep that in mind. Then we have our little train right here. Now this is a cut file. It's a Maker's Gonna Learn cut file. Um, and I'll show you really quickly this right here. It's a train puzzle, which is adorable we love this um, all makers gonna learn members have access to these uh, cut files and let's see here all we're gonna do is just ungroup it and delete the parts that we don't want so I don't want these little cards back here so I'm just gonna delete them um, then what I want to do we will zoom in here you can see right now that the train has five different layers it has three wheels and then it has um, the front and the back. And what I want is for that to all be one layer. So I'm just gonna select all of them and press weld. So that's one layer. And then I can change the color to um, green, actually. Green is gonna be the color that I'm using today. Um, it doesn't matter what color you change it. Sometimes I just like to do that so that I can keep track of what um, I'm, what material I'm cutting, what mat it should be on, etc., cetera, et cetera. So I wanna size this again, keeping in mind that I want the pattern to show. So I don't want this so big that it covers up most of this patterned piece. Now all I'm gonna do is grab my text over here. I'm gonna type in Bex, and I want to select a font that is thicker and wider and takes up more area because I'm gonna slice it out of this train so that the pattern peeks through. And if I choose a thinner font, uh, then you're not gonna see that pattern come through. So Brock the Jock is one of Makers Gonna Learn's fonts that is really nice and thick. 
Um, all yearly members have access to this font and almost 400 other fonts to date um, with their membership. And so that is an awesome plus of being a member of Makers Gonna Learn. Anyway, all I need to do is just decrease the letter spacing here until I like it and then size it on top of my train. And honestly, that's pretty good sizing. Um, so with that text box selected, I wanna press shift and I wanna click this other layer, my train layer. So now both are selected as you can see. And then I can just press slice in the bottom right hand panel. Um, then it yields these slice results and I can delete the pieces I don't need. So I don't need this thing that says backs in the black layer and I don't need this either. I just want this train that's left over that will show that patterned um, iron on through. Uh, and honestly guys, this is finished. It was that easy. Then all I have left to do is hide this layer. Um, and then of course I'll hide this one because I don't need it either. And then I'll press make it. Now we are using iron on, so we do need to make sure that we mirror these images. Um, so I've just mirrored that one. I don't necessarily have to mirror this one because it is the same left to right. It's not going to matter. Um, and then I will just press continue. The material that I'm going to use to cut out is the Everyday Iron On, and you can see we already have it here. It is one of our most used material settings, so we have started, we have favorited it, so it's easily accessible. Um, so we just select that, we're going to load our mat, and we're going to cut it out. Okay, once you have those cut out, you can grab your favorite weeding tool and just weed off the excess. And as you can see, um, I weeded out the um, Beck's, the, the text, and left those innards because we want that. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit challenging to think about it uh, when you're weeding. So just re uh, reference your design space design um, and make sure that you're weeding out the correct parts. So once I have those weeded, I want to preheat my easy press. Um, I'm gonna use the 340 temperature. And then I just need to grab my little tote here. I am gonna put my little mat inside the tote. That way I'm not having to worry about the seams from the back or like a handle getting stuck in there or something like that. Um, I can just put it straight in there like that and it'll keep it nice and tight and kind of wrinkle free. And speaking of wrinkles, you can see this has a few wrinkles. So I personally just want to take my easy press and go in there and iron them out. That way I'm not ironing um, the printed vinyl or the other vinyl onto a wrinkle and making it look odd. So once that's ready, I can place my um, first layer of vinyl down just like this. Okay, we're just gonna press, press that Teflon sheet on top. And as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and, and put this on. As you can see, um, this Easy Press is not the same uh, width as my design. I got a little lazy and didn't go get my bigger one, but that's okay. So we're just gonna press one side of it, and then we will um, press the other side and just make sure that everything is good and heated at the end. Okay, once your timer is up, you can just simply move your Teflon sheet over to the side and make sure that you're um, careful with it because it does retain quite a bit of heat and it can be a little hard or hot. And then um, just gently pull up on the sides and make sure that you're adhered. If you're not adhered, uh, then just apply a little bit more heat. Okay, after you have applied more heat and you are ready to peel, go ahead and do that. And you can do a couple of things. You can save this piece um, to use in a second, or you can use uh, your Teflon sheet again, whichever you wanna do. So now I want to just layer this guy on here place it on there and then uh, the reason that I said you may want to save this is because you want to cover back up this vinyl that's already down. If you accidentally hit the, the exposed vinyl with your um, easy press it will melt it and you will have a mess on your hands so you can definitely take this and just put it back over to cover it all up or you can use your Teflon sheet either one um, but you're just going to apply more heat for the same amount of time um, and get that second piece of iron on um, attached down. Okay, once you're finished with that, just remove the Teflon sheet or the extra um, transfer and then just peel back slowly. 
making sure that you're adhered. You can see um, that came up a little bit, so I just wanna apply a little bit more heat to make sure. And there we have it. We have our layered vinyl, and then we also use our pattern vinyl, and I really love how it turned out. You can see a lot of that pattern. It looks really cute. All right, there we have it, our pattern vinyl project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, go ahead and like and comment on this video. And if you're not a subscriber to Makers Gonna Learn, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we craft almost every single day with you guys. We would love to go through some tutorials and awesome projects with you. If you're not a member of makersgonnalearn.com or just Makers Gonna Learn rather, go check out our website, makersgonnalearn.com and see what all the fuss is about. We would love to have you crafting with us every day and as a member of our wonderful community of like-minded die-cut crafters. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys another day.